Greetings, Cafe Cats. It's Assistant Silver, and we're back with the wallpaper for July. In order to give Zero a little bit of a break, we've decided to let me share a recipe with you all. Um, this month, I'll be sharing my Nana's banana bread recipe, so it's a family recipe. And yeah, follow along if you guys want to learn how to make one of Zero's most favorite breakfast items in the whole world. <laughs> So as I'm from the U.S., um, none of these measurements will be in metric. That's just not something that I've learned, and I know I should probably take the time to do so, but I haven't, and this recipe also has not been passed down to me with that information. So for now, it'll just be in the measurements that I, I'm most comfortable with. So I'm sorry if that makes it difficult for anyone. Um, in order to make this recipe, which is my Nana R's banana bread, you will need two and one half cups of all-purpose flour, one and one-third cups of sugar, four teaspoons of baking powder, one teaspoon of baking soda, half a teaspoon of salt, about eight medium-sized bananas that are fully ripe, two-thirds a cup of shortening, so that can be vegetable shortening, margarine, or butter, that's up to you, four tablespoons of milk, four room temperature eggs, and optionally a half a cup of chopped nuts. Or if you prefer, you can use sunflower seeds. That's what I substitute often because I don't always have chopped nuts. To be clear, this makes a double batch of banana bread, so you will need two loaf pans in order to bake up this specific uh, recipe. If you would like less than two loaves of banana bread, then just cut these numbers in half and it'll give you one loaf, which is about 16 servings. Otherwise, it's a two loaf, 32 serving type of deal. So uh, yeah, let's get started. Your first step is going to be getting your bananas ready. And to do that, you can either put them in a bowl and mash them with a fork, which gives you a little bit of a chunkier consistency, or you can put them in a Ziploc bag and um, smush them between your fingers there and that'll give you a little bit of a finer consistency on your bananas. Personally, I use the fork and bowl method because I don't mind if mine are just on a, a little bit more on the chunky side. Um, so you'll want to get those started. And then once you have those done, set them aside, make sure that they're covered so that they don't go all gross and brown. And you're going to preheat your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. While your oven is preheating in a large bowl, combine your sugar, baking powder, baking soda, salt, and half your flour and mix. At this time, if you would like, you can add nutmeg or cinnamon. I generally tend to add a little bit of cinnamon because that's what I like, um, but my Nana doesn't. So it's up to you if you would like to or not. Once you have that mixed, you can add in your mashed bananas, shortening, and milk. Uh, the next step you need, well, I guess you don't really need it, but an electric mixer will really help you, or a stand mixer if you have it. Otherwise, you can do this next step absolutely by hand, but it will be a little more labor intensive. So you're gonna wanna beat everything with the electric mixer on low until it's blended, or um, by hand until it's, you know, just blended. And then you're going to want to beat it on high for a further two minutes. You can really get a serious workout on your arm muscles there if you do it, but don't skimp on this two minutes. Once you have everything blended, now is when you want to add your room temperature eggs and the rest of your flour. You can, if you would like, add a splash of vanilla extract in. My Nana doesn't. I do. It's personal preference, but it's not required. Um, and then you're going to want to blend everything until it's, you know, sm not smooth to say, but not patchy either. You don't want any like lumps of like large patches of just dry flour. That would just not be good. So once it's blended, um, you can, if you have them, add in your nuts or sunflower seeds or what have you and just gently fold those in through your batter. Take a minute when your batter is completely finish to grease up your your loaf pans you can use non-stick spray if you want or like line the bottom with parchment paper whatever whatever you use I tend to just slather the whole thing in butter and I've never had problems with it coming out so make sure you have your loaf pans appropriately greased and then you're going to want to split your batter into the two pans 
And once they're split, then you're going to want to bake them for 50 to 60 minutes or until a toothpick inserted at the thickest point comes out clean. Um, once that happens for you, and it'll be different for everyone because everyone's oven runs a little bit differently, but once that happens for you, then you want to remove it from the oven and set it to cool on a wire rack still in the pan. I cannot stress this enough. Do not try to take it out of the pan the moment it comes out of the oven. You will end up with a nightmare amalgam like amount of it was just it'll be a bad time okay just don't do it all right just leave it in the pan 10 minutes set yourself a timer go take a dance break come back and then when it that 10 minutes is over then you can take it out of the pan once that 10 minutes up and you've taken out the pan set it to cool on a wire rack until it's completely cool leave it alone don't touch it let it cool down completely okay okay cool. So once it's cooled down completely, from there you're going to want to wrap it up in like parchment paper or uh, what's that other stuff? Uh, freezer paper or something. You're just going to want to wrap it and put it in like a plastic bag. I mean, you can use saran wrap. We don't tend to have saran wrap. We don't really like saran wrap, but you just, you need to wrap it up and put it in the fridge and then you need to leave it alone for 24 hours. I know it's tempting to eat it because it smells amazing and it's delicious looking and it's going to be the best banana bread ever, but leave it alone for 24 hours to chill out in your fridge and then you can slice into it the next day. It just gives those those flavors time to like meld together and solidify better and like I don't know how to explain it, but like after leaving the banana bread to sit overnight, it is always way better than eating it fresh. So yeah, I know it's tempting but just wait the 24 hours, trust me. And that's really all there is to it. That is my Nana's banana bread recipe and one of Zero's most favorite breakfast items. And yeah, I hope you guys will try it out and let me know how it goes and if you liked it or not. And that's about it. Anyway, um, thank you guys so much for watching and I hope that you're having a totally awesome day and I will catch you guys sometime in the future or around the Discord server if you're there. Bye for now, guys. See you later. Oh, and because I forgot, just so you guys know, I didn't tell my Nana that I was giving you guys this recipe. So, snitches get stitches. Bye. I'd like to give a shout out to my patrons. Astra, Blazy, Bliskit, Cinewolf, Cryptozoo, Dallypup, Exora, Kumiho Brat, Marsha, Nat, Nirvana Draven, Red Eyes, Rezzy, Robert, Z said, Sola Sole, Striva, Tenerbis, Vesper Kai, Vi, and a big thank you to my caffeine junkie, Candle Kisses, Kiro, Ryozen, Dakota, and Tech Orb. Thank you guys all so much, and also happy birthday, Dakota Vega.